Right. I don't think we've I ever actually not. spoken formally. <laughs> but we've both been around the fucking circles long enough. Mm-hmm. You used to do the, uh, the, I don't know if you still do them, but you, like, I know of you just because of the panels. Yeah. Um, to, no, I did a uh, Tiberius panel like a few, few weeks ago. Um, that was pretty fun. Yeah, I don't do panels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of notorious for not doing <laughs> panels. <laughs> it's kind of rough. It's like, I, I don't like doing the open panels because you just... Uh, it's just so so diluted or diluted not yeah. diluted but it's usually kind of diluted too but it's, it's diluted <laughs> in terms of you just jump from topic to topic people with the worst takes so they're going to be the people talking to each other mm -hmm. um and to get on the closed panels you usually have to just be more kind of consistent doing panels in general so it's kind of a kind of a catch for me too yeah um, so i've been doing just a lot more kind of one-on-one -on -one conversations that's dude that's the only way it's the only way. Like, um, there was somebody who, um, there was a, it was, yeah, it was a prime panel about, uh -huh. um, it was pretty much like on this topic. It was meandering. It started off about like, um, wow, this is like a terrible tragedy for trans people that's happening right now. And of course got extremely derailed to like our all trans people pedophiles or something like that. There were, no, of course, like two, of course. Two, two horrible people on there, but um, there's someone who I wanted to talk to who was on the panel. I'm just like, I can't bring myself to get involved in this shit show, so I'll just talk to him tomorrow. And we talked, and um, it was um, JSU Gambit, and he's like, he's a smart guy, um, he's he's a programmer, um, but he's, then he's a, he's a dad, but he's like not in all like the online stuff mm -hmm. that often, and he, he just didn't, didn't know as much what was going on. The kind of more left wing people on the panel were not able to articulate themselves well, and then there were two like the actual Nazis. <laughs> that, <laughs> um, <laughs> and so, um, but it was like we could, we could talk through it, and um, you know, uh, he just he just wanted his kind of questions answered, concerns addressed, um, and this this is where I feel like some of the some of the messaging from the left is not super useful. So I'm. So, like, the, the term genocide, do I think it's, like, probably applicable? Yeah. But do I think it's particularly useful outside of any kind of echo chamber? Probably not. Um, I feel like the thing that's more useful to talk about is how the people in these legislatures who are creating these bills aren't doing it because they have some kind of nuanced like hey these methods are kind of experimental we got to protect kids until there's more evidence they're putting them in place because they fundamentally don't believe that any trans people anywhere are like real and you can you can see that mask going off as they're increasing the ages of these bands I, to like 26 i would i would push cases. back on okay i would add either nuance or i would push back mm -hmm. on the real yeah, um, I think some of them actually oh, do, do like yeah. like sort of straight dudes who don't believe there's lesbians. Like you just haven't had the yeah. the good dick yet, right? You just yeah, haven't had the man. right dick. They just haven't met me yet. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I think there's unlocked. there's some of those probably in there. Yes, um, but I also think some of them think that they're. It's the, the nuance I would like to add to it is like this sort of like the, a theological viewpoint that while they not they may not be they're not of God's intended design and mm -hmm. this is this is human free choice gone awry fallen to the you know this sort of mm -hmm. demonic satanic sort of influence and that sort of thing because. Yeah. I, I do cover like I have a whole three part series on dominionism in the US, which people do not understand how much of our government actually has been captured by the dominionists. Like it's terrifying. Um the military is absolutely captured by them. It's rough. Um 
and like weekly meetings at the Pentagon with like, I mean, generals numbering in like, I think we're up to like 50 some generals, stuff like that. Like wow. it's, it's actually like terrifying, terrifying yeah. Navy SEALs at their events and stuff like active Navy SEALs units, like at recruiting events for these crazy religious fucks. Um, mm-hmm. And so I think there is actually a fair amount of like that theological capture from um, where is that series on Dominionism? Anyway, I was looking forward to earlier cupcake. That's like old podcast. One of these days, tell you what cupcake, make a note. Um, we'll do a, we'll do a Twitch version of it. We'll do a video version of it and I'll do them back to back. All three things. Um, we'll, we'll make that happen. Um, because that, I mean, that deal with the, de- uh, the deal with the devil, Reagan, right. The, 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 the Southern Baptist convention and in, in Reagan in, in Dallas happened. And so we have those sort of like bad faith Republican actors who absolutely are in that sort of like, eh, you know, whatever I'm going to, you know, make this, this, this is good for business, right? This is, this is good for my business as a politician, right? But we actually do have true blue believers, and that's where that's where my pushback comes from is that it's, you know it, the nuance that needs to be added to like you know whether they think they're real or not I think they're they think they're very real, and the uh, that's the problem is mm. that they would prefer them not to be real. Well, hmm, okay, so and that's where the we, genocide yeah. becomes a sticking point because they really would mm-hmm. like to genocide them. Is that a productive yeah. term or not? Again, we can have that optics discussion mm-hmm. for just about everything. Yeah. But they As, really do speak, want them to go away. Um, I've got my cam on. You're free to put that up there in your stream if you care to, if that if people want to see that. Um, but I think I think what you said about um, kind of kind of almost the same that they same way that they view gay people that it's like it's evil. It's not really like so. When I say real, I mean real in the sense that. Um, it's like a, a valid disposition to have. They're like, this is a sin, this is bad, but like, look, if you're an adult, you can do free will. It's not as bad as murder. Um, mm. You know, we can't, we shouldn't really like totally stop people from doing this unless, you know, we get enough politicians in office and we can. Um, <laughs> um, so that's so that's what I mean in terms of like, they don't, they don't believe that like, so, Um, there's a lot of people who are maybe looking at this topic who are less informed that are thinking, okay, there's, there's, um, there's, say, say looking at from like kids perspective, like there's, there's kids who will grow up to be trans and they're like actual, actually trans, true trans. It's not, it's not how it works, but it's, this, this is their kind of social contagion theory. Um, yeah. And then there's these kids who think they're trans and they're actually not um and those kids can have a lot of harm obviously we do want kids who are actually who are actually you know quote unquote trans to get care but it's like um you know we're we're just not really sure about this whole thing that's like the more kind of moderate um less informed perspective um but i think i think it's useful when talking to those people to help them understand that these bills are coming from people who who don't have that that distinction at all they just have the distinction of um at a certain point we can't 100 percent tell you what to do or we can't yet anyway (laughs) tell you what to Um, do because you're you're a fully grown adult but we don't think that there's any anybody who ever should be getting these whoever should be getting health care whoever should be getting treatment surgery um even even counseling I think, I think one, the email release, because most of these politicians aren't actually the ones behind most of these things. Mm. I think the conversation doesn't actually even start at the political level, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, Or at least the politician level, right? Um, Because with that one email dump, we, we, we got a peek behind the curtains, right? And this is being driven by believers, it's not being like politicians are, you know, subject to lobbying and, you know, primarying and all these sorts of political manipulation yep. methodologies that any good lobbyist or activist knows how to utilize. Right. And with that, with that email dump, we got a true peek behind the anti-trans, uh, anti mm-hmm. um sort of uh, veil. And what we found was a bunch of fucking nut job, like true believers. 
mm-hmm. who, who absolutely are not going to stop at that point. They don't yep. see it that way. And so while we yep. can talk about these politicians who like are sort of this like eh, wishy-washy fucking position because of course they are. They're fucking politicians, mm-hmm. right? The ones who are actually informing this decision making and driving this in the uh, across the country in the like moms for liberty fucking clan uh clan Karenhood, right? The moms mm-hmm. for liberty type fucking groups. Dude, they actually are true blue believers and they 100% will fucking string yeah. up a gay person just like a black person in the south and fucking, you know, in and to Bellum South, right? Mm-hmm. Like they they're on board with it. They yep. like they think that queers are fucking you know grooming their kids to become gay and become mm-hmm. uh, to become trans. They think we're making gay like we're, we're making like look at the left hand yep. fucking charts that they're con- the, the left hand chart that they're constantly sharing. Like look look fucking Gen Z is like twenty five percent of them are identifying as queer now and you know that sort of thing. Like they're you know it's the left hand chart all over again. And like, it's so like, yeah, that's, that's the concern from the like, sort of like hardened, like, I look, we've never actually had a proper conversation. Can we like cards on the table? Like, I know you, I knew you may know me better than I know your uh, position. What is your political position? Like, What's what my are political you? Political position? Yeah, like what it would it just do for, for, let's be truly reductionist about it, right? <laughs> Take all the nuance out of it. Let's boil it down real quick for just speed running, right? Like, what kind of, what kind of leftist, progressivist, what are you actually? What am I actually? Um, so I, I grew up in a super liberal area. Um, so part of like going on Twitch, it's been nice to actually get in touch with more right-wing people and see like firsthand rather than you know watching the daily show (laughs) um um and i think i had kind of a political awakening around like the the 2000s seeing the the bush war seeing the patriot act go into place um i would say i'm a pretty pretty left-wing person um but it's (laughs) um Sorry, I feel like when you put me on the spot, it's hard to hard to orient in like a, a quick, clear way. Um, hmm. I can speed run that for myself. <laughs> but I'm expected to. When you're an anarchist, people very quickly make assumptions. So you have to be mm-hmm. really quick. Like that's one of the things that like is just in my repertoire. I have the I mm-hmm. have the elevator pitch ready and ready and locked at all times, right? Because mm-hmm. I would expect to be. Most people don't know what the fucking anarchist is, or if they do, if they know the word, or they've only talked to ANCAPs. <laughs> yeah, or if they do know Which, the word, it's. I, I don't. I don't know you that well, but I'm assuming you're not an ANCAP. You're Anca- more like an ANCAP, anarcho-syndicalist Anca- or something. ANCAPs aren't anarchists. Um, I have Fair. Tw- I have yeah. twelve <laughs> hours on YouTube dissecting right wing libertarianism and so called anarcho capitalism, and mm-hmm. I from the beginning to the end. Like I have twelve fucking hours of content on YouTube just dissecting mm-hmm. these assholes. Um, they're mm-hmm. not anarchists, but I am about as far into the left corner as you can peg if you're doing a political mm-hmm. compass uh, meme test. Um, I am technically, by technical definition, I am a post left, post anarchist. That doesn't mean I've left the left. It means I have critiques of the left as an anarchist. Mm-hmm. Post anarchism is simply a sort of uh, meta-ethical position that has a uh, like a higher meaning of anarchism that fundamentally humanity operates in an anar- anarchistically organized methodology and that only through sociological and ideological manipulations do you end up as not an anarchist. So that's sort of like how we default. And you can like, there's like the anarchists would use evidence of like cri- cri- uh, catastrophes, crises, uh, organizational methodologies that are, uh, that arise naturally out of those. We point to things like the Spanish Civil War, 50% of agriculture and industries being produced by anarcho uh, anarcho communes at that point, right? Like this sort of like when society breaks down, anarchism is what fills in the gap, right? So I'm by technical definition of post left, post anarchist, but I, um, advocate for a series of positions um cynicalism being one of them only because that's a a good starting point for our society that's a that's a touchstone we can reach but the place i want to go is several like you have to change trains at multiple train stations to get there from here so like we're not you know we're not going there in my lifetime 
but I'm still going to advocate for it. But yes, anarcho-syndicalism is a good starting point for uh, a lot of people trapped within a Western hierarchical system. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And so that's sort of the the territory I would occupy. But I I try not to advocate for any specific type, a subset, right? Because I am an anarchist of the purest form sort of situation. I'm an advocate for the lens of analysis that anarchism brings, the organizational methods that anarchism brings, uh, and first and foremost. So as far as economic systems or anything is subset within there, as I, sell, I tell people, if I were to actually like create 100 anarchists in a room and then walk mm-hmm. away from that room, I can't predict what's going to happen in that room because anarchism sure. doesn't yeah. have a, you know, a project of projects. They're going to organize. Kind of based, by definition. <laughs> yeah, they're going to organize based on uh, based on or anarchistic organizational methodologies. They're going to use consensus decision making. They use hierarchical organizational methods. They might use delegative processes. These sorts of things. But I can't predict what those 100 people are going to decide to do with their anarchism. Mm-hmm. And so that's that. That is the thing I advocate for more than anything else. And so, yeah, I would say, oh, sorry. No, uh, so off. I would say I am as about as lefty as lefty gets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I would say in terms of process, I'm probably pretty similar in that um, I basically want the kind of things that I um, generally strike me as, as most important are to um, educate and enculture people into um, kind of states of of higher agency. So it's important to me that people in my country and in the world, whatever, understand understand history, understand kind of how and why we're in the situations we're in, um, and have some kind of communal sense and activism to affect the world around them. Um, I'm not so tied per se to, I guess, what that end state is, which is, I guess, in, in a way, in a way kind of similar, um, because I don't, I don't know if like, um, yeah, I mean, I, I would say I'm like a, a communist in the sense that, um, we have like problems with the commons today and, uh, I, I want to live in a kind of like Star Trek world where we have a kind of like um, common, common peace and common justice and common goodwill. Um, Without the centralizing authoritarianism, I don't don't think as much about the kind of like end end state. Okay, so without the centralizing authoritarianism, I'd probably describe you more as a communalist than anything else. Yeah, I mean, even even Star Trek has some has some kind of weird stuff. But Star Trek supremacy over Star Wars. I'm just going to put that out there. Um, Don't at me. Um, um, All right. So I just want to... Deep Space Nine supremacy over... uh... Oh, Voyager. (laughs) Get fucked. Catherine, Janeway. Janeway all the the way. There's coffee in that nebula. (laughs) (laughs) Um, So I just want to get some grounding done. Because you and I have never had a proper proper conversation. So I want to know where you're coming from and that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah. Are you American? Yeah, I am. Okay. I always check. You sound it, but, you know, you double check. You never know. Um, okay. So, yeah, no, I absolutely, like, um, like, yeah, I'm I'm old enough. Oh, God, we're just going to have to do demographics here, right? Like, how, approximately, like, do you, do you share your age? How old are you? Uh, I'm in my, I'm in my early 30s. Okay. Old enough, but not quite old enough. Um, <laughs> well, just for the next statement, because I'm old enough to remember the, um, the AIDS crisis, mm-hmm. right? I'm older than I look. Um, so, like, yeah, like as an elder gay, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I'm super twitchy about these sorts of topics mm-hmm. because yep. I've actually experienced the genocide firsthand. Like, I've my people underwent a genocide. Right, like a, a yeah. the, the, it was intentional. The government intentionally did things, and they inten- and the Christian right took glee in it. Mm-hmm. Right, we have the COVID thing brought out the ads again, the old nineteen eighties ads of them wearing masks and gloves to protect you from the gay disease. Right, they were happy mm-hmm. to wear masks then. Right, 
And so I've, my people have seen this once before, right? And I, I, this, the trans stuff absolutely is not only, you know, his history may not always repeat, but it, it more often than not rhymes. And yeah. I, I am seeing the legacy of the sort of like the Reagan era treatment of gay people coming around again for trans people this time. Mm-hmm. And so I understand the optics of like there I definitely look I've I've done my fair share of hitting the trans community for optics on stuff. It's like, oh mm-hmm. god, you shouldn't fucking just leave that one be. <laughs> You're just going to get fucking battered on that front. You know, you probably mm-hmm. should just like that sort of thing. I get it, but mm-hmm. also like I I use the word cuz it is. Yeah, I don't I don't think it's inaccurate. I think I think it's um just it's not politically even, expedient for the purposes of like casual yeah. discussion. It's arguably even more, um, more accurate than for the AIDS crisis because now they're actually banning medical care. Mm-hmm. Um, well, we know see, the difference where I'd point to is in the eighties, we did, they were like, yeah, we don't care. We're not even going to look into mm-hmm. the medical care. But I'm going to bother. Let him die. Anymore. It's God's yeah. punishment, et cetera. Fuck them. Right. Yeah. God's cure for AIDS. Um, mm-hmm. Now we have the treatment and they're like, yeah, you can't have it. Mm-hmm. We know, we know it. Gender affirming care drops the suicide rates. Right. Yep. And like, we, we know that um, like nobody wants to have that nuanced discussion. Because nobody wants to have a nuanced discussion. Like, gender-affirming care, all they hear is chopping off the balls of a fucking, of like, a baby boy and shit like that. Yep. They have no concept of, you know, social transitioning. They have no concept of, like, familial acceptance. Like, social transitioning starts at home, right? Familial acceptance mm-hmm. of this individual is the number one pred- uh, predictor as to whether they're going to uh, commit suicide or not, whether they're going to self-harm or not, right? Yeah. If your family cut trosses you out on the fucking street, which I mean, again, as a gay man, like, yeah, uh, you know, been there, done that, right? Like, plenty of fucking, uh, like, uh, people have, you know, been tossed out by their so called families, right? Which, you know, I, yeah. I, I point to, you know, the family that ma- you make rather than the family you're born. Um, mm-hmm. and chosen family. Yep. Um, I fuck fuck the modifiers. Like that's your fucking family. Family doesn't toss you out on the street like that. That ain't family. Right? <laughs> that's just that's just some motherfuckers that you happen to share some like DNA with. That's it. Um, but yeah, like this absolutely is like yeah yeah. I get I get super twitchy about it, and it's just like you know what? It's just, I yeah. fuck these people. Fuck these people mm-hmm. because absolutely Florida is trying to like, like I said, I wear that, ba- I wear it with like a badge of pride. My only, in, my only indefinite suspension on Twitch, my only suspension on Twitch was for my predict. I'm like, yeah, they're trying to kill trans kids. Simple as that. Yeah. It's, it's what they're trying to do because I absolutely do believe they're trying to do that. Um, there's some politicians that are going to be in there and they'll be the wishy-washy sort of territory. they will be like, you know, the, the Ron DeSantis is right. Mm-hmm. Ron DeSantis doesn't give two shits about fucking trans kids. Yeah, hundred percent. He's pissed at Disney because Disney didn't fund him, right? Like yeah. he's he is a political actor of the highest order. He's a grifter, right? That that motherfucker is just trying to work a base. He is trying to get a galvanized base together to be able to get the votes and get the 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 political capital that he needs to further his career. That motherfucker ain't a true believer, right? Like, but the people that are giving him his talking points. The people mm-hmm. that are sending him money, yeah, yeah, they yeah, want, they yeah. Want so there's the so there's the true believer politicians. There's the politicians who are just you know have enough um, have enough brain cells going on to see that this is a an issue that their base cares about. Um, I and they similarly, they don't even care it, about it. They made them care about it. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there's people within the base who are. You know, if they're seeing this on um, Fox News or, you know, different alt-right kind of news sources. And there's, you know, they've only ever heard about trans people from, like, the Daily Mail. Mm-hmm. Um, but then there's there's also, and I guess, so this is, um, 
this is why I'm considering the kind of language in these in these ways, because there's this really large contingent of people who are um, who are kind of apathetic and who justify to themselves. You mean Americans? Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but I mean, I think I think people who people who could be reached to to care about this who are kind of letting themselves off the hook by saying, um, well, there's some there's some doubt doubt about the science. I mean, God, that's like that should be the name of our of our era, the 2000s era. There's some doubt about the science, right? That's the <laughs> It's the name of our age. <laughs> that, thank um, God I was brought up by some fucking somebody who actually, you know, a nurse who has a science education and doesn't believe in this bullshit. She's like, yeah, no, I'm going to protect you from these morons. Um, but yeah, I... I don't know. I mean, Does, obviously, I'm, I would, I would query. I'm torn. I don't want to fucking tone police anybody and say like, don't call it a, geno a genocide yeah. because you'll scare the centrist. Like, I don't, that's I don't that's, consider that's not where I want to be. <laughs> I don't consider like valid political cr uh, critiques to be tone policing. Like, uh, like I don't know if you've ever seen our channel, a uh, channel statement of praxis. Mm. We don't put up with shit. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's just it's like look, if you want to actually yeah. have a discussion. Right. Like when you do chemistry, shit gets messy. Right. When you mm -hmm. do like when you smash atoms, shit goes flying. Right. Mm -hmm. Science, political discussion, like oration, rhetoric, all of these things get messy in actual mm -hmm. practice. Right. And so I try yeah. and like I tried to set aside a space where people could have actual discussions. Right. People could argue. Right. Yeah. Um, without the fucking fake auspices, this this banner that most of left Twitch or most of Twitch, frankly, I'll fucking I'll, I won't bag the leftists for this one. Most mm -hmm. of Twitch likes to oh debate. That's not debate. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. Right. If you want to argue, argue. There's no there's no shame in arguing. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a, a time honored thing, but that's not debate. Yeah. I, I did debate. That's not what you're doing. Right. And so like I, where I would push back is what. What do you think can be gained, or at least I would not push back, but what I would query is... Yeah, yeah, for sure. What um, this apathetic voter base that you... this this The hypothetical of apathetic voter who doesn't have any skin in this game, right? Because if you've got a trans kid or you know a trans person, you usually, you know, unless you're a complete shithead, right? So fuck mm -hmm. those people. But if you're one of these apathetic individuals that doesn't have any skin in this game and encounters this argument... Mm -hmm. what what is the difference do you what is the predicted dialogue tree that you're like what are you what's the pros oh, yeah. and cons I can, I can break that down like line by line by line cool so um so m my issue in terms of what i've what i've seen um in terms of so how i've seen these things play out um if you start with um this is a genocide um it's a it's a more difficult point to substantiate because you you have to demonstrate to some extent intent you have to demonstrate a um, a level of, of harm that's that's somewhat widespread um, but if you start with these politicians who are pushing these bills are hiding behind the cover of um, there's some there's some questions about the science or you know maybe there's some kind of as you said social contagion um but in fact these are people who who truly don't believe that anybody should be getting this healthcare period they don't they don't believe that there's there's anybody who is um who is who's who's trans um they 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 want to push this as far as they can to prevent anybody from getting health care. And you can see it in these various ways. You can see that they're pushing it up to, to 26 in this bill. And when you're talking to somebody who isn't so informed and you can substantiate those kind of points that that push in a little bit on the um, on the on the rights narrative around these things, and you, you can start building a little bit of momentum there, um, then at some point you can maybe like, uh, honestly, when it comes to talking about genocide in um, these kind of like highly polarized, highly propagandized points, um, so like Israel is the other situation where I talk about genocide, um, 
I I like arguing, and I, and I have um, argued this in, in relation to the Israeli and like more more formal debates. Um, I like I like building up the facts individually, and then once I've established those, only then even talking about hey, like these three three things are important characteristics of genocide. Like I wonder if it even goes to this point, and then giving the other person the opportunity to start start filling that in. Um, and I guess part of that could be just personally how I discourse. Mm -hmm. And it's not even like everybody has to do it this way. I appreciate, this, this I appreciate really that you recognize that. Yeah. It's it, that's, that goes a long way to your character. <laughs> you, you're just like, look, yeah. maybe this is just, this works best for me. <laughs> right. Like uh, that's the yeah. dude, that's a level of self-awareness. that is <laughs> not that often found. So I appreciate yeah. that. Um, Somebody else might be able to, 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 to sell it in a, in a way that gets people to, to, to engage with it much better when they start from talking about, hey, out of the gate, this is the whole fucking harm. This is why I'm so upset about this. This is why this is such a big deal. This is why I'm making you like pay attention to this thing is because it really is this big a deal. Somebody else might be able to sell that much better. I have a harder time with that. So <laughs> I, I go about it in, in a different way. Yeah, That's fair. That's fair. Um, yeah, I think, um, I don't think it's that difficult to actually prove the, the genocide mm -hmm. thing, even without using the UN definition, which might not necessarily mm -hmm. meet, right? Um, the UN, that's some commie bullshit. Exactly. Um, globalists. Um, <laughs> we have a saying around these parts that uh, they're always three questions away from the Jews. Uh, <laughs> it's it's not difficult it's not difficult it's, you know who owns the media <laughs> right um so simple to do um but Richard murdoch is a jew oh my god yeah, i know right oh he, that's not but that's not the main that's not the lamestream media um so <laughs> um yeah i think i think it's not that difficult to actually um like show them the the scale scope and scale of the harm um mm -hmm. i don't think it's that difficult to actually um push back on um the sort of like you know give them tangible like uh, anecdotal examples as well as systemic mm -hmm. examples as well as medical examples right like mm -hmm. you can do the apa ama endocrine endocrine society if they want that sort of thing right whether we're you know it is logos egos ethos pathos right somebody with your name has to fucking know this right mm -hmm. would fucking whether you know let's play the game of um let's play pokemon or let's play rock paper scissor right um it's a big part of what uh, what I do, uh, especially around these parts, is like show people, like you, you know, by by demonstrable uses of rhetorical methodologies and rhetorical yep. devices and how to implement them uh, when you encounter these dummies, right? <laughs> like, okay, look, this is, it really isn't that complicated, right? Um, you know, if I drop that uh, drop that character development gay man been there saw the reg sort of thing like you know tra or I'm a trans person or whatever right you can you absolutely do this sort of thing I don't think it's that difficult to speed run most of these things given you know the current outcome of what it means to be trans uh, whether there is you know historical precedence for you know trans people existing well this is a new phenomenon no it's not new by any length of means here's the history of you know trans transgender people in just a human history right fuck mm -hmm. even the bible mentions it to some degree there's some like qu gender queer stuff going on in the bible even right like this is not a new phenomenon this is the the ramifications of living in an intolerant society here is the number one methodology for uh, uh for uh for extricating these individuals from it no it doesn't necessarily mean those things that you you expect it to mean and even if i have to go to a prescriptive or descriptive definitional set of genocide right yeah sure maybe the un defines genocide this way but go ahead and look up the page for genocide it's defined a whole bunch of ways by a whole bunch of people right mm -hmm. and so like there's definitely an argument for the descriptive use of the word now as far as those apathetic people go um yeah i think that's just a skill use a skill issue and i'm not like not shitting i'm just saying that's a that's a in person dependent sort of skill issue mm -hmm. right like you have to one know who you're talking to and two yep. know who you are all right, there's two two components to that formula, the speaker and the listener. And 
I think we there's plenty of uh, individuals, uh, especially like I mean within this community, other streamers, myself, who have absolutely been able to like work the genocidal definition as to whether that you know long term that had an impact. Who knows? Um, you know, it's different. Like, has anybody run a study, right? <laughs> anybody, anybody running your own fucking peer reviewed studies on these things? Um, I sure as hell are not. I am not. Let's um, see. So, so can I, um, see, um, yeah, I guess, um, I like your phrasing query on, on a couple of things. Yeah, so, sure. um, when it comes to, um, yeah, the, the ethos you were describing, Hey, I'm part of this community. Um, I've been through this. This is this is what's happening. So my my issue, the issue I've had with that is that it feels like um, liberals will pay attention, <laughs> conservatives will stop paying attention, mm. um, and but... and both of them I'm concerned about, uh, or or I guess say with the liberals even I'm concerned about how far they can carry it because oh i don't um, oh oh uh insert mm -hmm. quotation from martin luther king jr letter from a birmingham jail i don't mm -hmm. trust liberals at all well I, I, yeah i mean there's that but but also i mean um um let me think about this so this might be helpful for my for my background as well so i'm a um i'm a programmer and a scientist i'm a cancer researcher um and lifelong I, uh, lifelong uh, long IT guy, age four and from oh, a mainframe terminal. So if you if you want to if you can speak in that term, we can work it. Yeah. Okay. This is perfect. Yeah. So, um, the thing that I've really loved in my career is creating software tools that somebody else can run, or somebody else can run on a okay. shitload of data on a shitload of computers and get results you're you're and you're can, interested I, in the portability of the argument yeah i can build it somebody else can take it and they can apply it i build the hammer they take the hammer and they build something with it okay and so all right my my personal issue with like hey i'm trans i'm concerned about this all my trans homies are concerned about this is that it, it feels like it gets diluted down the line um and and somebody who's conservative is you know, might just throw out like, oh, well, you're kind of overly sensitive about this because this is your thing. I'm not saying there's no way to mm -hmm. counter that, but that's my that's my issue with it. That's why I like the logos over the the pathos and the ethos besides mm. just, you know. Okay, so in those. Let's, let's game this out. We'll start at the end and work back towards the beginning, right? Yeah. Logos. The conservatives won't care about your numbers. They won't care. Mm-hmm. We've seen that over yep. and over again. They don't give two shits. Yep, definitely. So the logos isn't going to work on them either way, right? Well, hmm, okay, uh, we can we can come back to that. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't agree with that, but we can. Oh no, let's we let's it hit it right now. I I got a decent memory. We can. I know where to, where I want okay, to circle perfect. back to. That's good because I I have a shit memory. Um, so um, I, I wouldn't. So for me for me logos isn't um, like here's all the stats on this. And here's like, look, these organizations said this, whatever. I, I think that can be very uncompelling, even for non-conservative people. I think that's not always the most compelling thing. It would be more like um, just kind of logically stepping from A to B to C. Hey, okay, you might think that these people are really just concerned. And by these people, I'm talking about politicians who are passing these bills. Mm -hmm. They're just concerned about, they don't want kids who aren't actually trans, you know, the kids who would later decide, hey, I'm not actually trans, leaving aside the case that a lot of them, a lot of people detransition because lack of support. Um, but leaving that aside, um, they're just, you know, they're just, they want to say they're just concerned about these kids who would detransition um, or, or would realize they're not trans, having life altering surgeries, whatever, uh, medical care, anything. Um, you can, you can talk about the substance of like, Oh, hey, here's how puberty blockers actually work. Um, Twelve-year-olds aren't getting surgeries. You can tell them some of the facts about that. They don't care. Part of logos, but the 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 thing the thing that I would hit on is, look, this is this is what you might think, and this is what they say their motivations are. But you can see that's clearly not true from these other bills that they're attempting to pass to um, ban 
care for people who are who are 26 years old who are not children they're trying to ban um people who are trans from being in the street like they have for uh, centuries in the united states um it's it's an all-out attack on trans people just existing everywhere that's the kind of um like most concrete piece of motivation that I think that I can attack. That will never and work so with, a, with a truly, uh, okay. like a truly right wing conservative position. Mm -hmm. They, um, are you familiar with the, they're not hurting the right people meme? <laughs> no, but oh. it was, a, I think it was a Trump voter either way. Um, it definitely Republican uh, and they passed some legislation that hurt them. They're like, they're not hurting the right people. Right. Um, it's the, are you familiar with the, the cruelty is the point? Um, Okay, so not but, not yeah. terminally online. Got it. The phrase, not the meme. Yeah. Um, okay, <laughs> so the cruelty is the point. Like that is that is the point. They're hurting the right people. Mm -hmm. They actually do believe that. That it is it is malice. It is mm -hmm. it isn't some logical failing or pro, or process prop uh, prob, mm -hmm. uh, error. Oh in the process. sure. Okay. Sorry. Sorry to cut in really quickly, but just if we're talking about if I'm trying to convince somebody who actually actively hates trans people then yeah 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 saying saying this is gonna hurt like trans trans people is is obviously not going to be convincing I mean, I'm, I'm talking about people who people who are not people who don't like hate trans people but who are kind of like on the fence about this legislation because they think maybe it's like um it's it's more moderate or or something like that um, if, if i'm talking to somebody who really hates trans people then yeah i've got to i've got to go with a very different tack to what, what would be your tack then? Um, honestly, somebody who actually really hates trans people, um, I would probably just try to engage them in conversation generally so that they can see that, like, we're, we're just kind of normal fucking people. <laughs> like, uh, um, um, fuck, what's his name? The, um, um, I'm sure you'll know. The guy who hung out with the kkk and like daryl um daryl yeah who has like 400 of their robes yep um that he took off of like the de deconverted um kkk members like where, where he talked about just like you know hates born of fear born of ignorance if you take away the, the ignorance you take away the hate um somebody who's really died in the wolf transphobic i think that's the kind of thing it would take and it might take like a while See, and them, this this goes this actually change. goes to what would be um, my circle back point. Mm -hmm. Your attempt to create a portable code base that could be executed uh, executed in a oh yeah it won't work system. with them. <laughs> well, no, it won't work. Basically, with I'm going to go with the majority of people. Mm -hmm. um, I I my instincts are to say the vast overwhelming majority. But I'm going to hedge my bets and just go with majority, right, um, for a couple of reasons. And I'm going to fall back on what I've experienced in my, like, streaming experience, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's, like, we've done, like, there's a reason I hold down politics. There's a reason that we do, we don't move over to just chatting. There's a reason that, mm -hmm. you know, I, I've, we've seen what happens at, like, 120 viewer and we have to do slow down, that sort of thing the argument needs to be customized, right? We have to build an extensibility into that code base. Mm -hmm. And what I've found is, is that there is no Windows operating system for human beings. Everybody's running a custom platform of some sort. Now you sure. can, there's a, you know, pri there's corporate software kits that have been installed onto uh, everybody's platform, right? That you can point mm -hmm. to as like, oh, they're definitely running that. Right. Yeah. But <laughs> the underlying code base is actually a custom code base person to person due to the 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 compilation of software that has been installed on that operating system. Right. They are they are the the, the composite, the the end result of societal forces that are so vast and varied that what it takes is for someone to sit down and actually talk to them, right? Yep. Like Daryl does. Mm -hmm. And I don't think this is just the true haters. 
I don't think these are the ones with the hatred in their heart. I think it is especially them for sure, right? But I think it's all of them. I think it's the apathetic moderates. I think it's those white moderates that Martin Luther King spoke about. Mm -hmm. I think it's the the even the leftists that like are misguided and maybe misogynistic or have a you know they're they're leftists but they've got that patriarchy pumped into their head and they still have those inclinations right that to transgress into other areas and they're just those instincts right mm, I don't feel like, oh I don't feel like, right like all of these sorts of things require that level of extensibility, which is why I engage, why I, I have the, the methodology that I have, is that I've found that there is no one size fits all. And the only things that work on that level are the baser instincts. Fear and hate will work on that level, no problem. It's very easy to get a, a, a fear program running. That's a, that's a silly, you can mock that up in an afternoon, no big deal, right? ship that. But when it comes to an argument that requires nuance, you have to understand their perspective. You have to speak to them where they are. And there's no way to build that code base. There's no way to build that argument for everyone. I need to know how old are you? I need to know where you're from. I need to know like what kind of like labor experience you may or may not have. I need to know whether you have any friends or family who are in the the right? I need to know whether you're you're in the you know. I, I need to know. The, the, oh yeah, it's uh, it's a uh, uh, it's a black dude on Twi TikTok or something. Amazing. He's yeah, he said he's the Lugabrata, and we've just I've just we've owned it ever since. It's like yes, yes, ship that. I approve like Lugabrata. Um, fucking like yeah, it, it's 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 you need that nuance in it because the fact of the matter is is that people are absolutely propagandized no one is immune to it and i, I just mm -hmm. had that lesson taught to me again just the other day by a professor of communications there's a, a study owner uh, he's, he's a professor making the rounds he's a phd mm -hmm. professor of communications who uh, specializes in political communications and he's studying politics on left twitch right now and so people are like getting interview requests and I made sure I got into that, that study group because like I want an anarchist represented, right? Like I want uh -huh. the position <laughs> represented. I'm going to hold that shit down. And he, one of the questions he asks is, are you a journalist? And I just instinctually, I'm like, no, 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 no. I am not a journalist. Like I, I have positions and biases. I have positions, like pl things that I am attempting to accomplish here. I'm an organizer. I'm an Alinsky style organizer, community organizer and activist. And all in said and done at the end, I'm talking to this guy and, you know, we're just talking and I'm asking him about like, you know, I'm like, okay, so like, what is journalism? I go, like, what are you doing these days? What are your grad students up to? And like one of them's doing the history of journalism with his uh, specialization in uh, like a focus on um, alt-right, uh, alt-right media right now. Uh, or, I'm sorry, alternative media right now. And he, you know, and I'm like, okay, so like in your professional professorial postgraduate opinion, like what is journalism? Right. And he, of course, has to do the typical, like, you know, high level, like he has to go back in history and like roll you through the explanations and that sort of thing. And we reach the end and he's talking about how wide open it is now. I said, OK, so in your professional opinion, am I a journalist? And he said, oh, yeah, without a doubt. And I thanked him. I was like, you I was propagandized because he explained how the, the, the concept of this like. Uh, the journalistic rule set was created by corporations at the behest of the government during the, the communist and socialist scare, right? And mm -hmm. so it, I'm like, I was propagandized and I didn't even know it. And you just in a moment lifted that element of propaganda. And so it takes those kinds of high level nuanced discussions with an individual to be able to penetrate in and actually change the, those things that may or may not be there. And I don't think there's a carpet bombing for this topic. I think what it takes is the trans community that just look at it to fuck leftists, progressivists, everybody who's got some skin in this game 
to understand, uh, to, to educate themselves, not only on the topic at hand, but in orative and rhetorical devices and skills, right? I think yeah. it, it behooves us all to practice our oration, to practice and to familiarize ourselves with the rhetoric and to know how to weaponize it, right? How to engage in these processes and not be afraid to engage others, even though it may not go your way uh, all the time. And because what we need is an army, what we need is an army of rhetorical warriors out there doing this because there is no one size fits all. And I think an attempt to do so is a waste of energy. Let me think about that. Hi, Cobra. How you doing? Commandment Cobra. Cobra. Um, no worries. Uh, Thirsty, take care of yourself. Much love. Um, do we have somebody? Hold on. Let's see. Oh, okay. So that's a side discussion. I don't need to engage in that. Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, so we've got, uh, sorry, Kai, you're a journalist, suck it up, sincerely, another one. Yeah, Alex, no, I've, I've firmly adopted it. I'm like, okay, like, I'm not going to be weird, like, but I want my press badge. <laughs> Cobra, thanks for the follow. Yeah, I absolutely want my press badge. I'll see you at the White House. <laughs> we're going go to go to the White House presser. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm down. Um. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's um, I think that's a wonderful point to to think about um, kind of agency and power we can have on Twitch to affect discourse, to affect people's understanding. Um, with respect to, um, yeah, I mean, what kind of what kind of solutions are effective and in what circumstances? Um, I think what you're talking about. Um, I would agree wholeheartedly, 100%, at a kind of um, at a kind of high level of of discourse. At a kind of uh, was the phrase I had a moment ago. Um, there's kind of like um, you know weapons grade discourse <laughs> where you're you're really getting shit done. <laughs> Where I would I would agree that that's um, yeah that's absolutely the strongest thing you have something custom tailor made you know who you know you are you know where the other person is um, okay and you, I and see you figure I out the see best where you're headed them the, the, at an emotional level I see where you're headed the, um, the talking points you hand out to the to the proletariat yeah there's like the bottom tier of like um, shitty um, factually inaccurate memes that it's just like, I don't, people are just going to be sending around fucking whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't even want to touch that garbage bell. But, but what I'm thinking about is like the, the mid tier where you have, let's say liberal people who aren't trans, but maybe know some trans people who are on like, I don't know, Instagram or comment sections on Twitch or, you know, the kind of like, <laughs> kind of, kind of mid mid um mm -hmm. okay. situations for for discourse the the, the um, uh the outback steakhouse of, yeah of comments. yeah and it's like i'm thinking about the dialogue tree that runs like like one volley and it's and it's kind of decided whether there's any possibility for anything to happen on that one volley and uh, all i can think about when i think about those situations is person a says I'm concerned about these anti-trans bills. Person B says, why? And person A says, because they're trying to genocide the trans people. And person B says, I don't know what the fuck you're on about. Like, shut the fuck up. This sounds like some I can get crazy, on, I can get crazy on shit. Yeah. As opposed to, I'm concerned about these because they say that they're concerned about, you know, kids getting like medical treatment that could mess them up. Um, but they're extending these bills up to people who are 26 years old. So it kind of seems like they're actually just trying to like stop 
trans people from getting oh see healthcare I, in general. I wouldn't if we're gonna if we're gonna water it down to that point. I mm-hmm. would I would argue you don't even mention trans people at that point. Mm-hmm. I would I would say like if that in that hypothetical exchange it would be mm-hmm. I'm concerned about these anti-trans bills. Why? Because this is just another classical example of government overreach done in the name of children that will inevitably affect adults. Sure. Yeah, I th- I think that can be pretty effective too. And even even on the kind of like first amendment levels, there's mm-hmm. like wait, you're not allowed to like put on a dress and perform that's going to be illegal now so doesn't that happen in like um i'm i'm not like i'm not straight enough for this shit but um doesn't that happen in sports broadcasting sometimes people like cross dress for perform i don't know Uh, not so much it happens it happens at the collegiate level more than the professional Uh, level uh, um the collegiates um, definitely do have like uh uh, like uh cheer uh like uh spirit yeah football player dresses up like a cheerleader it absolutely happens at that level it's like that would be illegal now like in your hometown Um, where you want to do this shit because it's fun because yeah yeah, if if drag is fun for anybody who advertises it um, <laughs> flash dance um yeah flash i would dance. this I would, would be illegal now the government is trying to take i would away yeah I, I wouldn't you even Why I, wouldn't, aren't you mad if i were that concerned about the like that that moderate level that we're talking mm-hmm. about i would abstract yeah. it away from trans people then i i wouldn't even concern myself with dresses mm-hmm. or cross-dressing or trans or gay if we're mm-hmm. really doing that like that's like yeah if we really are trying to build a talking point for that level to avoid the word genocide for mm-hmm. this 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 set of hypotheticals yeah Mm -hmm. i would absolutely just frame it as a basic liberties issue and government overreach because the person Mm -hmm. who's going to push back on the genocide right probably not the the moderate but even if it is the moderate right Mm -hmm. if they're over a certain age they probably like especially you know if you're old enough if you're my fucking age you remember pre 9 11 right Mm -hmm. you remember pre patriot act Right. Mm-hmm. And so like if you're in that age category, that sells immediately. Right. It's just mm-hmm. another big government overreach. It's you know, yep. it's it's just they're absolutely just trying to make more take more of our rights and liberties. And while it may affect a trans person today, it's gonna affect you tomorrow because mm-hmm. that's how government works. They're gonna yep. screw us again, right? Like I yep. do like screw giving these people more power. Anything that gives them more power is gonna fuck all of us. Right. Mm -hmm. And so like I would frame it that way and I just dis I would just immediately distance myself from the trans issue entirely if that's Mm -hmm. the concern. Like if if genocide if it genocide if the term of genocide is really gonna cause an like a psychic pushback from Mm -hmm. a person, then the argument should should necessarily just distance itself from the trans argument and address their base concerns that you probably get you can slide in under. Mm -hmm. Because they Yeah. I think that's pretty fair. I think um, I think what you're saying is probably um, so um, for the same reason that it would work especially well um, with conservatives with like a, a harm reduction liberal. I don't I actually don't know exactly how effective that would be. So so breaking that down, if they are more conservative. Yeah, you're right. Probably just. Distance it as far as you can for trans people. Let's talk about government overreach. This doesn't need to happen. This is like, show me the harm. Prove to me that any kid's ever been hurt by this. Like, I, you know, they're taking our toys away because one kid got hurt. That argument sells pretty well. But, you know, some more harm reduction liberal might be like, well, yeah, take the toys away because somebody got hurt, right? Um, and in that case, I probably would want to um, say, um, put put it more in terms of like, they're 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 tr- clearly based on their actions trying to push this towards just getting rid of well, trans people entirely but don't don't buy what they say about that this is like more limited fundamentally though that's just an argument for my initial position that like if if you're going to like if you're going to try and create the the broadest spectrum like uh um mm-hmm. uh, dialogue tree right for this to try and apply in this sort of like lowest common ad- denominator like factor Mm -hmm. right if you get that kind of pushback then immediately it just swaps over to mine where you need to customize and tailor the argument immediately right like that's you you're just i I guess it's yeah i guess it's like um uh a straight up um compromise between our positions where um you're saying it's got to be custom i'm saying it's got to be 
slightly custom, but I think at a, at a, so, so your, um, and I, I mean, uh, I'm saying your, but it's just what you mm -hmm. happen to be describing this. This is, I, this is what I engaged in when I, when I, when I told you about talking to, um, um, talking to GSU Gambit, um, and kind of talking him through, through the situation it was like hyper custom, hyper personal, um, um, that's, that's a situation that, um, yeah, I think is, is most effective and is effective one-on-one. -on -one. Um, I can, and, and, I can, and, I can tell you from experience, what... I can make it work with a room full of like 75 people mm. with one on three. If I've got three sure. that are really, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, mm -hmm. those are basically mm -hmm. the limits of where I've, I've figured out mm -hmm. that I, I can make it work, but yeah, your point, yeah, your yeah. point stands. It, it's, it's definitely it, a, a more, you know, a smaller classroom size mm -hmm. <laughs> situation. Um, no, um, I think there's, there's probably the two, the two, um, Apple, I'm thinking Apple about Bee. something that you can ship out. Well, and it's like, I, I think if we had just those two Applebee's things. and TGI Fridays, uh, right? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that yeah, you need one that's gonna will play better for the the sort of like the conservative leaning towards mm -hmm. I don't give a shit, yeah. right? And then the ones that are gonna be nanny state helicopter parents, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, and and it's like if if we can elevate the discourse to this, um. On a broad scale, it'll slightly influence, I think, a lot of people to to move slightly in, in the right direction. It's it's not gonna be the kind of like you you talk to somebody face to face and they yeah. they really start to get it, but it's like I think it's it's an upgrade from where a lot of the discourse that I've seen around these. Although in general I feel like I've seen excellent discourse around um around these kind of bills. Um, just judging by I don't know the people I follow on Instagram or whatever <laughs> I don't have like a, <laughs> judging, a comprehensive judging picture, by my but... self selected filter that I've, <laughs> um, I've built. like like uh, relative to what I've seen to other topics I feel like I've seen really well kind of like rhetorically well put together points relating to these bills. I'm just gonna um, take, is, I'm just gonna great. take credit on behalf of the the LGBT community, right? <laughs> and just be like, yeah, because this isn't our first fucking rodeo. Mm -hmm. right like we've <laughs> dealt with this before <laughs> and i wish i could always say it was once only but we've been dealing mm -hmm. with this bullshit for a long time so yeah it's not the first rodeo that legobita had to deal with what's up sweet um i mean before we even move on to anything else or whatever or drill this down even further i just like to express my like gratitude for being able to engage engage in a dialectical exercise with somebody who can actually engage in a dialectical exercise so thank you likewise always <laughs> always lovely <laughs> hey, i i do my fair share of battering nazis about their ears on this channel so you know it is occasionally nice to have an actual conversation <laughs> yeah it's nice when we start well above the level of having to correct misinformation about what puberty blockers what are, are what are words <laughs> are, we, are they're, they're giving puberty blockers to four-year-olds oh. yeah Sure. Would really make sense. They don't really sure. go yeah, through sure. puberty at four years old. Um, <laughs> oh god, I saw one uh, today on Reddit. Um, Mother-in-law who uh, it was a father and his young daughter, and mm. she was having like diarrhea, and it's still be like diaper wiping territory. And the mother-in-law, like the the kid, like the young enough that the like the kid was like she she wiped back to front. The mother-in-law mm. wiped back to front. And the father goes out and like, why did you like, why did you do that? Well, it's not like she has a vagina yet. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, my mother-in-law thinks my daughter doesn't have a vagina yet because she hasn't hit puberty. It's like, it's, it's insane, but it's not, um, it's not like, I'm not incredulous about no, it. No, no, it's absolutely. Like, it's so, it's so easy to imagine yeah. somebody saying this. Yeah. Yeah. You're like, oh, no, that passes. You're like, yeah, that's, that absolutely checks out. People are fucking dumb as shit. Man. Oh my god, I think my favorite was um, uh, going on estrogen. If if like for for trans girls, going on estrogen increases their risk of breast cancer. It's like, yeah, no shit. You get breasts, you have increased risk of breast cancer. <laughs> 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 
cat just cat just asking how did that person survive for that long <laughs> yeah and and that's, and, that's and swede in chat who has fundamentalist parents right and he's dealt with this like leaving a fundamentalist family that sort of thing it sounds like something my fundy parents would say mm-hmm. right like it absolutely it rings true immediately you're like yeah that resonates yeah. Did you fail sex education or what, sex what, education what, fail you? Yeah, what what sex education? <laughs> her sex education was probably all all your pieces all your your pieces are dirty and naughty and sinful mm-hmm. and don't touch or think about them. Mm-hmm. Right. So fuck it. Um, it's, the, it's the other side of um, the guys on Twitter saying that they won't wash their ass because that's gay. I swear you know, to God. Which is just, it's like, how are these people on this planet? Like, okay, the, the one thing where I agree with, like, flat earthers is I also don't understand how some people don't fall off the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Relaxing <laughs> ASMR one hour. Thanks for the follow. Um, my parents didn't let me attend sex ed outside of what the church provided, so sweet. Imagine that. Uh, and GL, yeah, GL, I had never heard of that until coming here. Yeah, the way I, I, one day we were talking and it just, I started yelling about fucking straight dudes. Just wash your ass. Wash your fucking ass. Right? Because uh, hashtag bidet life, hashtag bidet supremacy. Um, they're, in all, they're on all my toilets in my house. Like, it's that simple. Fucking bidets. Right? And Eat it. Um, I I live in Las Vegas, so we don't need it. <laughs> oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, a uh, good blast of cold water up your ass in the morning will get you going too. Hey, uh, who needs coffee? Um, and so like, yeah, like it, there were people, yeah. like legitimately multiple people in chat who were like, "That's not a thing." Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, let me introduce you to a little thing <laughs> called the internet. <laughs> Twitter isn't all bad. Sometimes, like, I I, I feel like we wouldn't have just as many examples of that if not for twitter and for that i'm i'm thankful for that platform it's probably the best thing that it's produced it's fucking hell site um <laughs> and that's spoken as a redditor <laughs> <laughs> oh god so hey, reddit has got some useful information oh no i love reddit uh i, I want to say- find out like what type of software to download for some purpose or oh. i'm looking for it's, All it's, types of shit. I, I maintain it's Twitter is the worst of humanity and Reddit is the best and worst of humanity. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, I, I mean, that was a, that was a solid, uh, a solid discussion. Like I, I can, can I go in interview mode? Like what? I, sure, yeah. I, I'm guilty of never having actually sat down and I, look, I don't watch other people's streams. I'll just, everybody knows this yeah, about me. Cool. I, <laughs> Um, where's 4chan says cat. Um, 4chan is, uh, we're not going to mention them. Um, um, so like what, what is the thing that you, what is your cause? What is your topic? What's the thing you do the most? Um, fundamentally, I really like discourse and I really, so for, for me personally, uh, for a lot of topics, I just, learn best i think about it best through discourse with others um so that's like that's that's fundamentally why why i'm here i have kind of like political um things that i care about um um so i mean that to 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 credit to your namesake i would imagine right yeah yeah um but yeah fundamentally i'm on this platform because I like the the interactivity and the the chance for discourse and communication, whether it's um, kind of like face to face via video or, or even people in chat, a kind of real time com- communication. For me, um, yeah, I just love that part of life, and it's so uh, it's so useful and rich for me in terms of my own thinking, my own understanding, learning from other people, teaching other people, um, and I've realized that I've just. In, in my life, I've kind of adopted uh, without having thought about it that way, but just adopted the kind of Socratic dialogue with with myself in terms of when I think through things. Um, and as, as a scientist, kind of thinking through, okay, well, how do I, um, how do I know something is true? What are my assumptions about it? How do I investigate that? It's critical for debates, for prepping for debates, which is where I, I, I learn like the most of anything is prepping for a debate um, because if you're really good at finding your weak points yep. and then filling those in 
with a bunch of sources that nobody ever fucking calls me on, which is very upsetting because I, I have you my did the research. Talk. You did the All research. These fucking sources, and I want somebody to call me out and say, "Give me a source for that." I can give it to them, and they, yeah. they never do. Yeah, um, it's, it's always yeah. I, I actually I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> I got an entire cheat sheet here that never gets used. God damn it. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, fundamentally, I, I have um, kind of strong moral convictions and feelings about the world. Uh -oh, um, moralism. But I also have such a um, um, so much that I learn and question about myself and about the world that that act of um, questioning and discovery. And I, I don't necessarily always discover that I'm wrong, but sometimes I uncover better reasons for believing a thing. Mm. I find like, oh, okay, cool. Actually, this is an even better reason to, to think this way. May I, um, may I give an my example? My initial response was good, uh, but actually like the, there's an even more justifiable reason this is the case. May I give an example? Um, um, of of that sort of like okay so but I'm a consummate defender of anarchism right like I, yeah. I'm a proponent not just a defender like there's there's yeah. actual like your your computer okay IT um, forget decentralized we need distributed networks right any mm -hmm. any student of cybernetic theory understands we need distributed network topologies to re to provide resiliency as well as a host of other uh, uh, ancillary benefits to uh, to that uh, system. And mm -hmm. so in my pursuit of being able to defend this better, I come across this dissertation by, uh, uh, by this professor where he assembled a, a book of symbolic logic investigating and proofing uh, anarchism as a, uh, as a topology and network system. Right. And I have to track this book down. And the only copy I can find is in a UK university library and they're done with it. And so I get them to ship it over to me and I'm like, I need a copy of this book. I'm not, I'm not into that shit. I can barely read this book, but you better believe that book's on my shelf in case I ever need it. <laughs> like, yeah. When when defending your positions, oftentimes you will find reasons for your belief to be even more deepened. You're like, oh, mm -hmm. yeah, I didn't know that. But now that I know that, I'm more right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but Wordy, I'll have to I'll have to dig it out for you. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it off my shelf. Remind me during one of our VCs and I'll 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 get you the title. Yeah. Um. um yeah, I mean, in terms of kind of specific, um, specific political issues that I that I care about, that kind of drove me, in in particular, to want to go on Twitch to to talk. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I mentioned kind of coming to political consciousness in the in the two thousands uh, with the Iraq War. <laughs> Bush um, Bush will do that to a motherfucker. <laughs> uh, um, and um, just seeing like, okay, wow. Um, um, really, really bad, really huge bills can be passed and mm -hmm. they can come into place. Things can change overnight significantly for the worse. Yeah. And if we don't, you know, we have like, this has to be our project to at the very least reverse these things. And it's probably useful to learn about history to understand what other bad things might be on here that we need to reverse. <laughs> it's also useful and, because they haven't changed the playbook ever. It's mm -hmm. the same freaking playbook over and over again. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, the the, communi uh, uh, the communications professor I was speaking about um, when I was asking him <laughs> quid pro quo, motherfucker. Um, when I was asking him uh, about his political leanings, and he said, "You know, I'm basically a far left, a far lefty." He said, "I was always a green voter up until Bush." Yeah. <laughs> Bush, he was like, "All right, we gotta, I gotta do something." <laughs> but Bush changed that voting track record. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Bush administration, the good old days, the good yeah. old days. <laughs> the good old days when we thought maybe making fun of the people in power would have some impact. Oh, I mean, it always has an impact, just not the impact that we want it to have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes um, it means getting them elected. Fucking Obama, man. Obama, like you know, 
He caused the Trump presidency. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fucking A. Yeah. No, it's it has been a wild ride. Um, it's this coming of age with the internet, seeing technology rise, seeing the Reagan administration infect everything, seeing the seeing the Clinton era, seeing you know, seeing the Trump era. Oh, I've hated all of it. <laughs> the internet um, part, the technology part was good. I've, you know, like I said, age four in front of a mainframe terminal. 14, I'm doing custom programming. 25, I'm an independent consultant here in Las Vegas doing work for the casinos, right? It was a good, I've had a good run. I don't do it anymore. I burned out. I retired. It's call it whatever you want to call it. Um, but I, I still love the technology. It was the capitalism that burned me out, not not a, a a failing of the love of the processes so yeah that's it's a useful it's, i like that we could connect on that level <laughs> you're like you're like wait no we speak this we have a shared language we can we can do this um because oftentimes i do default back to that trying to explain anarchism as a, like an organizational method Right, that like this sort of the cybernetic theory aspect, right? That this is sort of rather than this top down, it's sort of more of a horizontal organizational method and the delegative process and a distributed network rather than this centralized or most decentralized system that we have, right? It's a useful an, uh, uh, an analog to be able to communicate through. And unfortunately, most people, you know, don't have that necessarily. So, 50% of what an anarchist does is, edu is education. Um, Someone in your chat reminded me of a, a quote that I put in a, a presentation in, in high school. Push. Uh, where I was, I was splicing together scenes from like V, v for Vendetta, talking oh. about like the Iraq war and that, that speech from Bush. Yeah. yeah. Our enemies are innovative and resourceful. And so are we. They never stop thinking about new ways to harm our country and our people. And neither do we. Yep. He was, dude, Bushisms, I miss, miss Bushisms. Bushisms were great. He was such a fucking <laughs> meme lord. Oh, God. And OBG, help OBGYN share that love for whatever that one was. But, oh, he was, you know, yeah. I believe the human and fish can coexist peacefully. <laughs> he was great. It was great. You fucking cool. We look back at that war criminal as quaint compared to Trump. I'm against human animal hybrids. Yep. Uh, and we have unknown unknowns, Rumsfeld. Uh, yeah, so um this is actually um a, a great description. I don't know if you've heard this before, but I um uh, I've I've read an amount of uh Slavoj Zizek and I, I find him a really interesting thinker and um an example of like a kind of description of ideology. That, that I really like is like the so the Rumsfeld you have like the the known unknowns right the mm -hmm. things that you know that you know oh are we no, are we literally unknown. gonna do a Samuel L Jackson in in, um, in Boondocks um, oh yeah have you ever watched yeah. the, the Boondocks and Samuel L Jackson actually yeah, does I this that. I yeah that episode. I think I rewatched that recently um, but there's the there's the the unknown unknowns the things that you don't know that you don't know but the missing quadrant that's the the ideology is the the unknown knowns the things that you don't know that you know and those are the things that you never think to question mm -hmm. the things that are just kind of obvious um and and, and yet those... when you take a you know put a magnifying glass on them oftentimes you'll mm -hmm. either find out new information about yourself or you'll find that oh i need to remove that Mm -hmm. that's that's and a... so you see like um you know the kind of things in america that are kind of considered like possible versus impossible that like you could um lower taxes by a lot or you could you know spend government funds on this or that but the idea of so like when it came to um to covid and um pharmaceutical corporations and um paying them for vaccines what you what you can't do is just as the government like take them you know in a war you can conscript factories to build something and it's considered war profiteering if they're trying to make a buck off of it but in a global pandemic you can't just conscript pharmaceutical corporations to 
create viruses to save lives and I, it's not considered. I challenge that uh, that that position and I th I say as an American we could declare wa declare war on anything and all we had to do was declare war on covid and just go for it. I, yeah, I, why don't we just why don't we say that like I don't know um uh, I don't know tie it to like illegal immigrants or something. Um say that uh, Oh God! How, how would you how would you do this in a way that would um, hit COVID, but not not other groups of people? I'm trying to think of like the the right formulation where um, it's like um, I was thinking with um, you know the the Dylan Mulvaney uh, people throwing away their piss beer. It's like can we just like can we trans the guns next? <laughs> <laughs> Can we, can we get Armalite to get, oh, like, Bill see, Mulvaney as a... See, see, around these parts, we're anarchists and we're pro-gun. <laughs> uh -huh. uh, see, my sure. position, whenever people come in here, and the, the right-wingers, like, we do, we get them immediately. Because they all think we're, like, liberals or something. It's hilarious. Um, our uh, The official channel position is go government-subsidized guns for everyone except cops. Mm -hmm. Um and a special a special a specialist programs for black trans women. They mm -hmm. they need specialty training and arming and fuck this because we're never getting rid of well, guns in this country. A lot only for black trans. Women. Yeah, like fuck it, you know. I want my emotional yes, like support nuke. God damn it. I want my emotional support nuke. I would feel much safer in this world if I had my own personal emotional support nuke. And I think a lot of trans people would as well. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. like, Yeah, I mean, I, um, I don't think that in general, like, we need to, we need to just ban all guns everywhere. And I've, I've shot guns a little bit. It's extremely fun. Um, but I think it would be cool if we could make guns not... Um, uh, a penis like if it could not no. be oppressed oh penis. oh that's that's never um, happening <laughs> it, 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 well if we if we get them uh if we get them trans enough i mean we, we got we got people to stop some people to start drinking bud light which yeah they, um, they, that's that's there's other beer like there, there's there look i uh this is okay so back well, the hilarious thing is the other beers that goats are also yeah they're all beer. they're all rainbow <laughs> they're all rainbow capitalist um like this is like my family, right? My stepfather's judge, FFL holder. Um, we had multiple training facilities uh, in two states. Uh, at age like, at age like fourteen, fifteen, I'm doing like I'm teaching classes. I trained with like I, my my firearms credentials are deep and varied, right? Um, and so like when the right wingers come, I can definitely like batter them about the ears when when necessary on these topics. Um, I actually, unironically, like, I know this is, like, a, a point that the, the sort of liberals fucking hammer all the time, but it is actually true. I don't think we have a gun problem. I think we have a mental health problem. <laughs> and to your point about them seeing them as airsats peni, right? Mm -hmm. Like, it's, if you could, but again, I think all you have to do is, okay, and all, quote, quote, all. All right, all you have to do, all you have to do is dismantle the patriarchy. <laughs> all I'm saying is if we trans guns and they move to knives, then we have to trans the knives, all right? We just they'll, they'll never give up the line. guns. They'll never give up the guns. You know what would happen first? If you trans the guns, they would take trans. They, they, I, I know these people. Fine. I accept. You, you compromise accepted. We'll do it. This is, this is, <laughs> I know these people. I've I, I these people are my people. Like I'm telling you right now. The guns arm the trans. Yeah, way. they they'd be like, fine, I'm trans now. You're not taking my gun. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's how they are. You don't, okay, here's our compromise. You don't need a license, but you do show after, you, you do have to show that you're currently taking estrogen. That's the. Oh, fucking, I mean, they all got man titties anyway, so they'd be fine. Um, let's see, I'll try another, yeah, GL, I remember those. Um, let's see. Tactical dresses. Uh, we should make them at least give a few prominent brands so we could definitely arm a few bad shit militias. I mean, uh, after, uh, was it the Pulse nightclub shooting? 
gun ownership uh, when gun ownership in the um the the gay and trans community started shooting through the roof the the mm-hmm. the firearms companies and and here's what like mo- firearms companies do not sell directly to consumers this is this is something you need to understand there's nothing they do not sell to consumers Right. Mm-hmm. Everything goes through third party middlemen. It's the the car uh, car like dealership thing all over again. So it all gets filtered through uh, through middlemen and all those middlemen are gun guys. Right. They are the they are your gun toting right wing nut jobs by and large. And they were more than happy. To take those queer dollars, they were more than happy. <laughs> They're like, I don't give a shit. If you, I don't give a shit if he wants to wear a dress. He got, he got money. Yep. He want to own a gun. Yep. Well, sweetheart, I'll call you whatever you want. Right? Like he, t- they don't care. It transcends their politics. When you, when you pierce the veil, which I mean, luckily, unluckily, whatever, however you wish to view it, right? It just my lived experience. I have thank due to my familial background. Um, I know these fuckers like, you know, um, Grossman, uh, you did the rise of the warrior cop killology, right? I've, sh- I've shaken that dude's hand as a teenager. I know I've met this dude. I've trained with this dude at ranges, like not his training, but like we've been at the same ranges training, right? Like Ignaz- Ignatius Piazza, uh, Piazza for front sight. I've trained there with fucking military. I know these people, right? Once you're past the veil and they know you're like a gun person, they don't give two shits about politics. It is hilarious how quickly the politics go out the window. They don't get, they're like, yeah, I know you're one of those weird lefty fucking anarchist types, but you're okay. You got your AR-15. I can trust you. You know, it's like that. Like they don't, they're like, yeah. I get lock in my maid outfit and cat ears. Yes. Yes, as long as they know that you're not going to ever try and take their guns and you're down. Yes, I want the extended bag. Ooh, you, you they they be like, all right, let's so. You? And oh, you know yeah. what? When you buy that extended mag, you might want a flash suppressor as well. Also, you're going to need a bag for that pretty uh, pretty gun you just purchased. Uh, we got a women's range of purses that are concealed carry right over there. You might want to buy. Uh, take a look at them. They don't. They don't care. They're capitalist before anything else. As long as you got the cash and they know you don't want to take their guns, you have cleared every checkbox for the gun nuts. It's, I guess uh, capitalism can bring us together and solve, solve I, all ills. Right? Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, <laughs> fuck it. Yeah. No, it's, it, is, it is hilarious how, like, they're, they front load that stuff as a shibboleth almost. Right? Mm-hmm. Because the right wing has managed to associate themselves with these positions. Rather than, or you know, uh, rather than actually hold the positions, because like you know, again, you can, I can absolutely have a conversation with a gun nut about like you know, it's like, well, I've, uh, Trump's protecting our guns. Like, gun, Trump was the first one who said, you know, take their guns first, then we'll sort it out in the courts. Are they trying to ban bump stocks? Oh yeah, oh no, or they actually. Uh, yes, uh, bump stocks. Well, see, this is under the the Trump administration ATF. Bump stocks were made illegal, and so like yeah. you, I have actually had conversations with gun nuts where I forced them to concede the point that Obama was a more pro gun president than Trump, because under Obama we actually expanded gun law, uh, like expanded gun ownership. Uh, under Obama, we de-restricted uh, concealed carry and open carry in uh, national parks. Right. Mm. Uh, under Obama, we sort of like rolled back some of the ATF uh, uh, regulation and undid some of that. Under Trump, ATF regulation got tightened down. Under Trump, he expressed explicit intent to take guns from citizens. And so you absolutely can hold these people's feet to the fire and make them concede the point that, yeah, Trump is a more anti gun president uh, administration than Obama ever was. And so, like, yeah, it's it's interesting being on the inside for that one, as mm-hmm. like uh, we're big on stand up around these parts. Doug Stanhope, he has an old routine about um, talking about racism with a black guy, and he's the black guy says, "You can't understand racism. You're white." And Doug replies to him, he says, "You can't understand racism. You're black. They don't hold back because I'm in the room." Mm-hmm. Right. And so it's that sort of being behind, being on the in crowd that so, so they, they speak freely in front of you. 
right? And you get to see those unfettered opinions and positions without those like political shibboleths up. And I'm telling every single person on the left, all of the liberals, I tell everybody their secrets. It's like they don't care. They really, really actually don't care. Like the gun guys will be, they will, they'll be like, well, sign me up for a dress. They don't care. <laughs> all, all they care about is their guns. They're gun fetishists. That's, that's yeah. all they care about. They are single issue voters. Um, years ago, the NRA conducted a study among, uh, of their own, like, uh, of their own membership. And they found that an NRA lifetime member, this is like 15 years ago, an NRA lifetime member has an average of 28 guns or more. Wow. Yeah. Like that's the, le- it is a very expensive hobby and it has only gotten more expensive due to their own shit fuckery. I will, they, they fear themselves into buying sprees and then capitalism does what capitalism does and the price never returns to baseline. And so they just get taken advantage of over and over again because of their own fear. Oh God. I, it's just, I, you know, again, it, 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 for me, it's not some Warhammer fans. It's, I weep for them. For for me, it's mostly a pragmatic position. Like I, I tell Europeans who are like, you know, the guns or the, blah, blah, that sort of thing. It's like, look, if you have a magic wand that you can wave that can disappear all 400 to 420 million guns that are in this country, plus erase the knowledge that the untold amounts of gunsmiths in this country have to build firearms from scratch. If you have that wand, uh, wave it. By all means, wave it. But... You don't. So at the end of the day, I would rather my community, be they anarchists or or just marginalized communities as a whole, people of color, fucking women, whatever. I would prefer that the the not that not only racist nut job patriarchal like white supremacists own the the vast overwhelming majority of guns in this country that's that's just sort of my position is pragmatic is like you know shit gets weird and it is getting weird i would prefer <laughs> us not to be completely defenseless see the um was it the yama or alpaca farm the trans farm in colorado yeah. um oh they i don't know about this oh the the locals the trans alpaca yeah oh yeah uh, somebody somebody in chat the hive mind will hit it real quick um they um they they were having issues with the redneck locals And the sheriff, they were calling the sheriff, the sheriff was doing nothing, and the locals were harassing them, and they couldn't do anything about it. Like, they they were showing up in uh, Unicorn Ranch. Thank you. Um, They were, the locals started showing up, harassing them at their ranch, and they were showing up at night, and one night they rolled, uh, they showed up. In uh, with a pickup truck full of fucking dudes ready to do some stuff. And the Unicorn Ranch members turned on the floodlights and there's a bunch of trans people standing there with their rifles and AR-15s ready to defend their property. And you know what? They haven't had a real problem since. And the sheriff, of course, comes out and says, well, if they had had a problem, they should consult law enforcement. And they're like, we've been calling you y'all asses for how long? I didn't say it was Texas. Uh, I think it's Colorado. Oh, it's Colorado. Okay. Yeah, it's Colorado. Um, like, yeah, they, 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 they turned on their floodlights and there's a bunch of trans people standing there with AR-15 saying, you got a problem? And the locals backed right the fuck off. But if they hadn't been armed that night, it looks like there probably would have been a firebombing or something of that nature. Yep. They came in number, they came ready to disrupt. And so like, you know, and then I can point to like Texas where the cops showed up to uh, attempt to dismantle that uh, homeless encampment and the John Brown gun club showed up to defend the protest and the cops back down and the city releases a presser saying it was a misunderstanding. We weren't there that day to, uh, to dismantle the homeless encampment. We were merely to ensure the safety of the community. It's like, of course, yeah, you got your bullshit called out on. 
And so, like, yeah, that's sort of my position on gun ownership in this nation is, like, dude, all the racist nut jobs have them. All of the authoritarian bootlickers have them. The state has them. I would rather the trans community, the people of color, women, fucking anarchists, socialists, maybe not the communists, but um, <laughs> the communists. Um, look, I'm an anarchist. We have a history. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I would I would prefer the marginalized communities have them because I really think we're gonna. I think we not are going to balkanize. I think we already are balkanizing. I think it started a while ago and I think it's a process and I think you can point to a lot of stuff and I really don't want to be unarmed when this weirdness starts kicking off. So, yeah. That's fair. On, on that note, um, I should probably head out. Got an early morning. Um, this was, this was fantastic. I, I, it was, it was pleasurable to, to the nth degree. Um, yes. It's, it's rare we get an actual conversation. Um, you're welcome anytime. All right. Thanks so much. Thanks for chatting. Yeah, Have take, a good one. Take care of yourself. Take care, chat. Bye. Bye. Everyone, Socrates. <laughs>